I'm going to present our work in the Wi-Fi signal-based human activity recognition. This is a joint work with my colleagues in Nanjing University and the Michigan State University. So as we know that Wi-Fi signal is almost everywhere, and human bodies、uh, can actually reflect these Wi-Fi signals. So the human movement will introduce changes in the Wi-Fi signals, and、uh, Uh, for today's Wi-Fi devices, even very cheap、uh, Wi-Fi NICs can detect such changes in the Wi-Fi signals. So we aim to use the commercial devices such as the Wi-Fi router or laptops to detect the changes caused by human activities and use such changes to recognize what is going on around these Wi-Fi devices. This approach is very good because、uh, it works in dark, and Wi-Fi signals can penetrate walls, and you don't need to carry anything, don't need to carry the wearable devices.、Um, but existing work in this area is、uh, kind of have no models. They do, do cannot quantify the movements with the signal changes. So they have an approach based on the machine learning approach that they use statistical statistical characters of these Wi-Fi signals, such as the distribu distribution of the power change. But this only gives a very rough ideas about this、uh, Wi-Fi signal changes. We cannot tell what is what in the Wi-Fi signal is caused by the human activities. We we only can guess、uh, the, this pattern is, is is related to human activities. So if we use、uh, the machine learning based、uh, approach, if we have different environment, as we know that Wi-Fi signal is dependent on the indoor indoor multipasses. If the multipass condition changes, maybe the 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 system cannot work because it is learned from that specific environment. So in our approach, we propose to use model-based approach. So we build models between the human activity speed to the Wi-Fi signal changes, and then we build signal、uh, changes to the、uh, models for the signal changes to the human activities. So our model can be very robust to the environment change, and also we can see that the Wi-Fi signal. Captured by the commercial devices are very noisy, and、uh, in such noisy signal, we need to discover patterns from human activities. So we need to use models to discover these patterns. Otherwise, the patterns we discovered may be related to the environment, not really re re related to the human activities. So we need to have a model-based approach that will be much robust. And our model is based on our understandings of the multipass. As we know that the, the wireless signals were tra、uh, travel through several passes from the sender to the receiver, and they were combined coherently at the re at the receiver. This combination is based on this signal's amplitude and phase. So, for example, in in this graph, we have. We have three passes: two red passes, one from the line of sight pass, one is reflected by the wall. And in this case, when the human moves, the red pass will not change, so we call it a static pass. And the combined signal will be a red vector in the IQ plane. But there is another pass reflected by the human. That pass will change when the human moves. So the green green vector will change its phase depending on the human movement. So this green pass added together with this red pass, we will have the black one, the combined signal. And we can observe that the combined signal will circle around this decay comp component, and its amplitude will change. So it, its amplitude will change when the human goes around. So we can actually infer the phase of this dynamic component based on the amplitude change of the received signals. 
So as we know that the phase of the signal will change by two pi whenever this path length changes by the amount of wavelengths. So we can actually use this to measure the movement distance of this this reflector. And in this way, we, we have the distance. We can divide it by time and get the speed. So we can build a speed model for the received signal. So this model is quite accurate because Wi-Fi signals, as you know that, in 5 gigahertz, the wavelength is only 5 to 6 centimeters. So if the path length change by 5 to 6 centimeters, the phase will change by 2 pi. And if the, we, we have recorded this uh, um, amplitude change waveform in this, in this graph, and we see it's like a sinusoid. So each of these cycles means that the human moves by a distance of uh, four to six, uh, uh, five to six centimeters. And we can just count these cycles to infer how long the person moves. So we actually do this and find that the error is very small, only less than three centimeters. So we can ac accurately tell that how long this, this object moves. And also our model is quite robust because in the different environment, when the environment change, the metapaths will change. But we know that for linear combinations of these signals, they will not give new frequency components. So we do a, a, a experiment in environment, different environments with different moving uh, movement uh, directions with different persons for three different activities. We see that the speed we measured has three clusters. So one is for the sitting down, it's very slow speed. One is for the walking, it's, it's at the middle. One is for the running, it's the fast, fastest uh, activity. So we see that uh, we have, we can clearly tell which is the activities. So we going on to get a CSI activity model based on our speed measurements. So human activities are characterized by the movement speed and the change of the movement speed. Because for activities such as falling, you will see that the person is initially static then fall down, the speed up. And after that, the people fall down on the floor, it will be static again. So we can use the time frequency analysis to find out the speed sequences. So the, in this spectrum, we draw the uh, speed. Uh, this is the time. This is the frequency of this movement uh, th that corresponds to the speed. So we can see that different activity has different movement speed transitions. So for the working, we can see that we have a high energy band in here. This speed is nearly constant. And for falling down, we can see that the person initially is quite static, then quickly it speeds up and then goes to static in, near, uh, in less than uh, half seconds. So in this case, we can tell that this person is, is possibly falling down. So we can use these characters to build a model for human activities. We use hidden Markov models to build this. And the hidden Markov models has different states. Each of these states corresponds to a certain kind of movement speed patterns. So we have different uh, movement speed patterns. Uh, slow movement, high, uh, high speed movement, and others. And we can use the transition probability in the hidden Markov model to characterize the transitions between these states. So we can tell that uh, this transition sequence is possibly falling or uh, working. So based on these two models, the CSI speed model and the CSI activity model, we build our system called CALM. So the CAM will first collect 
the CSI measurement, the channel state measurement from the commercial devices. Then he will, it will do the noise reduction because the signal is not very good. And after that, we will extract uh, features from this uh, denoise the signal and use HMM to recognize the activity. So for the data collection, we can actually uh, collect a lot of data from CSI because for each of these antenna pairs, suppose the transmitter has N antennas, the receiver has M antennas, for each of these antenna pairs, we can collect uh, 30, uh, collect six CSIs on 30 subcarriers. So in total, we have N times M times 30 CSI streams. But these streams are all very noisy. How can we reduce the noise in these streams? So we discovered that there are correlations between these CSI streams. Because based on our model, the path length change caused the fluctuations in CSI. So actually, the subcarriers has very close uh, wave, wave lenses, for example, in these two nearby uh, subcarriers, their wavelengths only differs by a small amount, 0.004 centimeters, very small amount. So their phase will be very close to each other, and their change pattern will be very close. So actually, we have draw a graph in here. So the x-axis is the time. Y-axis is the different CSI streams. And we can see the regular strips uh, along the time, uh, time direction. We can see that this is the regular peaks and the valleys in the signal. And we can see for the similar uh, subcarriers, we can see the phase change smoothly in, in the same antenna pair. And we can see that the, the pattern is quite, clo uh, quite close to each other. But the problem is that the phase of this, uh, this uh, CSI stream will be opposite of this, because uh, the peak of this uh, CSI stream will be a valley of this CSI stream. If we directly add them up, they will be canceled to each other. So to enhance the, this CSI signal, we need to find the correlation between these streams. So we propose to use PCA, Principal Component Analysis, to reduce the noise. So PCA actually dynamically um, calculate the correlation matrix between the CSI streams. And it, it can find out uh, whether these two phases are differed by pi or half of pi then it will com combine these signals, the noisy signals, to a very good signal. And it's m much better than the directly low-pass filter approach. So after noise reduction, we can do the activity detection based on the variance of the signal. And after that, when we detect uh, activity, we will use time frequency analysis, the wavelet transform, to extract the feature. Then we will fit the features into the HMM model. We build the uh, HMM model for eight activities, including walking, running, sitting down, and compare the patterns to each of these models and decide whether the people is doing uh, which activity. Our model is based on uh, more than 1,000 samples and performed by uh, 25 persons. So for evaluation, uh, we have uh, implemented our system using commercial devices, commercial Wi-Fi router, and commercial laptops. And we can do it in real time, and we trans transmit the UDP packet from the sender to the receiver, and we sample the CSI at a rate of 2,500 samples per second. So the tenfold validation accuracy for our Eight activity is uh, very good, uh, higher than 96 percent, and we can actually detect very far away movements. Uh, one pair of this sender and receiver can detect the movement at at 
14 meters away. So it is possible to cover a very large room, uh, size like this uh, lecture room, and uh, maybe four, five, uh, 400 meters square. It's, it is possible to cover a very large room, and we can do it in real time. Also, our system is quite robust. We only need to use a specific training data set collected at a specific place. We can apply this model to another place the system have never saw before. So we, can, we have conduct uh, experiments on, on different environments, including open lobby, apartments, or small office. Using the training data in our lab, we, we apply it to a different place. And the result is quite good. We can still get more than 80% accuracy. So this means that we can have quite good robustness of this CSI model. So in conclusion, uh, we have discovered that CSI measurements actually gives us very accurate measurements on the movements of the surrounding peoples. And we have built two models. One is the CSI speed model, and another is the CSI activity model. So our model are actually quite robust to environment change. So we only need to train once, and we can apply to almost every indoor environment and to different persons. So that's all. Uh, thank you.